at running back, Tim, uh, it was just a few years ago that uh, Devin Ford and Noah Kane came in as top five running backs in the nation, the pair from uh, Louisiana. Well, Noah Kane leaves the program. Devin Ford's still here. Kevon Lee, of course, coming off the most productive season from the running back room. But you got to think this is the one target in terms of the entire team to get Penn State to where they want to be. This running game's got to get a lot better. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, I don't know what the rank was exactly, but it was it was pretty damn near the bottom of the out of 130 teams. There was some somewhere in the 120s in rush yards per game, which is you know for Penn State. I mean, that's just unfathomable. Like you know, I, I know we're you know we're a long ways away from three yards in a cloud of dust. You know, from, but uh, still, you'd expect a Penn State team to be able to run the ball half decently and they couldn't even do that and frankly that that's also what cost them games against Iowa and Illinois if you just had a serviceable ground game you know maybe even with a take one Roberson at quarterback you could perhaps uh, have hung on in Iowa City perhaps could do enough to beat Illinois but you know water under the bridge but I, uh, I think with the running back room there's definitely some optimism with Nick Singleton coming in now he I, i've and marty and i've also said this ad nauseum on our shows but uh the starting job is there for him to grab by the horns at this point um and he's and i've from what i've read so far on like last 20 percent i've seen like some videos posted of him just absolutely crushing it in squats in the weight room and you know look and people are saying it invokes uh, memories of saquon barkley doing the same things in the weight room. So we'll, we'll see how it translates for him on the field, but that's another, you know, besides uh, our and Perbula, I'm, it's also another uh, incoming freshman. I'm going to keep an eye on during spring practice and especially in the blue white game is see if he can, you know, razzle dazzle the crowd at all of some big plays, but you know, if he, if he, if he continues to develop the way he has um, stays healthy, I, I really think, you know, maybe by if not if he's not the starter at the beginning, I mean it could I could see like Kevon Lee probably starting the game at Purdue, but you know, it wouldn't shock me if he's already getting a decent number of carries in that season opener, you know, in game one of his collegiate career. And eventually maybe a couple games in becomes a starter himself. I mean, I think He's he's that good. The room is that wide open. Well, as far as uh, you mentioned, Devin Ford, um, you know, I guess, I guess we'll see if he's still with the team after spring practice. There's, I still have this, I still have this lingering thought in the back of my mind that, you know, maybe after spring practice, depending where he is, maybe he sees the writing on the wall that he's going to have a hard time cracking the running back rotation. Won't be anything more than a guy who's on special teams returning kicks and maybe you know he wants to get more playing time at elsewhere i it, it's certainly not inconceivable to me that he could hit the portal kind of similar to what noah kane did maybe maybe devin Ford may just want a, a reset you know kind of like what kane felt like he needed and which you know it was clear with with noah that he was going to be the odd man out going forward which it's unfortunate because he showed definitely showed promise as a freshman back in 2019 but you know, it is what it is, but I do think uh, I'm hopeful, frankly, it can't get any worse. So I'm, I'm hopeful the running game will be more productive for Penn state in 2022. What exactly that entails, whether that's enough to, you know, improve upon last season's record. I don't know, but frankly, uh, it can't get any worse. Yeah. Like you said, it can't get much worse. Um, I mean, you add Singleton to the mix. The the kid looks like he's, you know, like you said, you, you don't ever want to compare anybody to Saquon Barkley, but there's a lot of Barkley-like features, the Singleton, just the build, the explosiveness, the strength, all of this. And I think that's one thing Penn State really missed last year this running game was, yes, people will dump on the offensive line, and this is something I wrote about a lot during the season. There were games, it was the running backs and not the offensive line. There were holes there. 
Yeah, they weren't great, but there was holes there to be had. There were running lanes and the off and the running backs either didn't see them, didn't hit them, whatever it was. So you throw a guy like Singleton in with his elite burst and acceleration and speed. I think that, you know, you don't, we saw this with Saquon. When Saquon was here, those offensive lines were not very good. Sure, everyone gets a free new Samson Galaxy. He had the ability to take a small hole, a small opening, and just turn it into a big play. And I think that Singleton is the same way. And, you know, you mentioned Kevon Lee, Tim. And I know this is something we talked about during the season on the show. You and I and Ellie mentioned it as well. You have to wonder, if you watched Kevon Lee last year and you watched Kevon Lee two years ago, he looked like two totally different backs. Last year it seemed like a lot of times – he was putting too much pressure on himself to be the big run back, like the home run back, which he's not, and that's fine. And my kind of hope is that now that you'll add Singleton as that home run threat, if Lee's cool with being the guy he was as a freshman in 2020, you know, give me the ball, I'll run over a linebacker, I'll take four or five yards and go back to the huddle and do it again. Because you can have a very effective running game with that combination, that thunder and lightning combination, which I hope we get. So we'll see what happens. Um I mean, like you said, Devin Ford, I still think there can be a role for him on this team. He's elusive enough in the open field, rather as a third down back on special teams. Um, I know James Franklin thinks the world of him. There's been talk of Ford potentially coming on as a grad assistant whenever he does hang up the cleats as a player. So I know there's a lot of respect between him and the coaching staff, and they think the world of him and his football IQ. So I do think there can be a role for him yet, but my biggest hope is you add Singleton, you add that home run threat, and even if your offensive line play is not great like it was last year, you know, when you have a guy who, again, not saying he's going to be Saquon Barkley, but Barkley-esque where you don't need to give them a lot of room to make the big play, you don't have to have great blocking. You don't have to have excellent offensive line play to make that work. So I'm really hopeful that was singled into the picture. And like you touched on, Tim, since he's joined campus or got on campus, excuse me, he's done nothing but turn heads and – I mean, when you were you had it down on the screen there, Mark, he was number 31 player in the country by 247 Sports Composite. When you're number 31 player in the country, you come in with very high expectations. By all reports, he has exceeded those expectations his first couple of months on campus. So I think Penn State fans, you know, as hard as it may be to be optimistic about the running game, I'm also not going to fault anyone who is optimistic about it because of Nick Singleton.